All right, welcome to my webinar on multimeter modification to achieve gigaohm input impedance for transducer preload measurement. Um, so we know when we torque a transducer, we often use a capacitor to reduce the voltage and also use it to measure charge because Q equals CV. Uh, but then what happens uh, if we uh, uh, if we do that measurement, and this is using a 10 microfarad capacitor and assuming that we've charged it up uh, with torquing a transducer, uh, the voltage uh, uh, bleeds down, whether you do it positive or negative, depending on how you hook up your multimeter probes. Um, you're, you're going to see a, a really fast change in voltage, and that's both uncomfortable and not accurate uh, for the user. So we want to make that voltage much more stable, basically increase the time constant. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, use and by increasing the impedance of your standard uh, entry-level multimeter. Um, but before I go into that, uh, just uh, want everybody watching to know or listening here live uh, that I do consulting uh, for, well, this is my company, Ultrasonic Advisors. I do ultrasonic transducer consulting. So if you have uh, questions, issues, a project that you need help on, uh, book a discovery call on my website. Um, so when we preload a transducer uh, by torquing it, we create charge on the transducer, which then can be used to measure um, the uh, uh, that that voltage uh, it develops over a parallel capacitor that we put for sort of like a sensor, so that creates a Q equals CV, basically by measuring voltage, knowing the capacitance of the large capac film capacitor. We can then use that voltage uh, to determine the uh, the force and the stress, and there's a calculator for that on my website. But basically, this voltage that we measure is going to be proportional to the preload according to certain equations. Um, so we want that voltage to be stable and accurate. Uh, so if we have a 10 microfarad capacitor uh, measuring voltage in the standard way, you see that it drops very quickly. But if you have a 100 microfarad capacitor, hence increasing the time constant by 10 times, uh, you have a bit more of a stable voltage, but it will drop about 1% per 10 seconds. So 100 microfarad is better, but it's not perfect. It's not extremely stable. And you know, as an operator myself, uh, assembling transducers, I see like you know the the voltage drops, and it kind of makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable with how the measurement is because this is not typical of other types of measurements we're used to doing as engineers. So uh, let's say I'm preloading this transducer here. Uh, but instead of continuously preloading a, pre -loading a transducer for these experiments, or even for your own experiments where you're trying to develop your own capacitor probe and test things out, uh, I basically used a uh, a battery and a a, a 220 uh, nanofarad capacitor. So I charge it with a battery, and that basically gives me a certain amount of coulombs on that battery, which I can then use to charge my capacitor probe. So I actually don't, you know, this is the measurement of the capacitor. And so I actually don't use a transducer in this specific uh, presentation, but I just charge this capacitor to act like a charge, uh, you know, a source that gives charge. Uh, so for the probe, I used a, uh, um, a 10 microfarad film capacitor. Um, and I hooked it up like this. So it's hooked up just, you just have the multimeter probes and you just pretty much splice them and put put it in parallel. Um, this is the same circuit basically, just the, that film capacitor is in parallel. So we know the capacitance of the system. The transducer capacitance is negligible. It just simply serves as a charge generation uh, uh, transducer, you could say per voltage. So here's me charging that, charging that uh, uh, capacitor up, uh, nothing too fancy here. Uh, and then I deliver that to the probes. Um, and, and that's what's used to then measure this. So if I deliver it on the 10 microfarad capacitor, this is this is what happens. It drops like that. And the, and the, and the 100 microfarad capacitor is a bit more stable, uh, obviously. But I'm still using, as you can see here, the millivolt range or the voltage measurement uh, function. This is a traditional multimeter. And the 10 microfarad is actually not too bad. But what if you want an even, even more stable um, uh, response? You can multi modify a standard multimeter to exhibit very high input impedance. So if you cut this for the specific multimeter I'm using, and I'm going to describe the models, if you cut the shunt used for high current measurement, 
you remove the fuse for low current measurement, and you remove the diodes uh, by breaking them or desoldering them used for AC voltage measurement, you have basically modified the multimeter so that when you, you apply voltage, you're directly applying it to the ADC, the analog digital converter of the multimeter, which has um, giga ohms of in, um, input impedance. Uh, the reason that we don't see that when we're using our multimeter is because that that impedance added is also external and it stabilizes the circuit by so reforming a filter. So you get really stable measurements. However, in our case, we're already applying a 10 microfarad or 100 microfarad capacitor. So we already have that filtering aspect. We don't need that uh, resistance anymore. So we're actually modifying the multimeter to serve our needs precisely. But we have to remember one thing, there's a specific way you have to connect the probes and I'll describe that. But as for the modifications, this is the multimeter I'm gonna be using for, for this uh, webinar. But uh, so this is what you do, remove the fuse, cut the shunt, remove the diodes. And I show you where those, those are here. And this is what you do for another multimeter. Uh, you don't remove the fuse, but you remove the diodes and the shunt. And this is another inexpensive multimeter. So you don't remove the diodes, they're actually I don't think there are diodes here per se, uh, but uh, you remove the fuse and you remove the shunt. So you can do this on almost any entry level multimeter. Um, so obviously it's in more inexpensive. You, you can take the risk of breaking something if you start with something that's 30 or $20 uh, US at least, or even free like this one might be for, you might even get this one for free sometimes it's different stores. Um, uh, but this is very important. Once you've done that modification and you want to access the high input range, you have to do two things. Use the 600 milliamp scale or whatever, or the 200 milliamp scale, depending on your multimeter. And also use the 10 amp input. See, I, I didn't connect the probes over the voltage. I connect the, the positive probe on the amp side. That allows that the circuitry inside of the uh, multimeter to allow you to directly connect to the ADC uh, without any uh, parallel uh, impedance uh, that that's going to cause drainage. But, and you then you you still have this as you see that you still have this uh, 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 capacitor there for the probe. Uh, so this was the original. This is ten microfarad original. Like I already showed you this, the voltage is dropping very quickly. Um, and this negative is not significant here. It just happens to be negative. The same thing happens if it's positive, it still drains. Um, so uh, it, uh, I should have probably made it positive. Usually when you preload, we always orient the probes such that they're positive. My bad, sorry. Uh, but here's what happens when you have the high impedance mode is that it's very stable. And the circuits are the same. Like you still have the probes are the same that you have that uh, microfarad uh, capacitor in parallel, but this is very stable. Um, and as an extreme, because it has an extremely large input impedance, it's not draining uh, the voltage over the 10 mega ohm input impedance like the standard voltage uh, measurement setting would. And note that you can still use your standard voltage measurements even if you modified your multimeter because it doesn't affect the voltage side of it, at least for DC voltage measurement. Um, so here's a here's a nice summary slide I put together for the numbers. Okay, whoops. Um, the summary slide is for the 10 microfarad 600 millivolt range. This is the this is the normal case. Uh, also, the standard voltage measurement over the 100 microfarad with the 600 millivolt range. And this is the modified version, 10 microfarad with a modified 600 milliamp range, but it's one milliamp per millivolt, so it's like one to one still. Um, so what I what you find is after 10 seconds for the first case, the 10 microfarad in the standard setting, you lose nine percent of your voltage over 10 seconds. For the 100 microfarad, you lose 1% of your voltage over 10 seconds, which is actually not bad because preload takes about five seconds. So you can do this for practical engineering work. You can still have 100 microfarads. But if you want a bit more accuracy and more comfort in how your numbers are appearing and drainage of your voltages, because sometimes there is drift. Sometimes you do torque your transducer and you will have uh, drifting of voltage uh, after you've applied the, the, the preload. So if you want to avoid um, questions about drift or how that's occurring in your system, um, you can use the high input impedance method and be sure that you're only you're, you're only measuring um, the voltage and the, or the charge generated and not dissipating anything. So in this case, it had a very, very slow bleed down time. So it went from 
it lost about here negative 175.8 to negative 175.7 millivolts well, lost 0.1 millivolts in 33 seconds uh, if you do the time constant calculation this ends up giving you about six giga ohms of input impedance um so and so the or time constant of 60,000 seconds so you're not going to see um decay in voltage you may be able to measure it but you, but it will be almost insignificant, 0.15%. It's uh, it's um it's pretty pretty low, uh, and it will provide yeah. So so it's a uh, really great for stabilizing a voltage using a uh, 10 microfarad capacitor. Um. So. As a final recommendation, or in a summary, so any entry level multimeter can be used, uh, for uh for high impedance settings. Uh, but basically, the high impedance scale is going to be relative to the smallest scale of voltage measured. So um, if you have a 200 millivolt, like a, a multimeter that goes down to 200 millivolts, you know, then when you, you if you set to 200 milliamps, then you'll have a plus or minus 200 millivolt scale with high impedance. And in my case, I started with a 600 millivolt um, multimeter. So my 600 milliamp was the lowest uh, setting, uh, which and which gives me a, a decent range uh, for uh, measuring voltage with high impedance. Um, uh, you so yeah, this there's a question: Is milliamp to millivolt valid for most multimeters? Yes, unless you change it. And, and the same, yeah. So all the multimeters I've tested, they're all the same, and you could test that using a voltage uh, measurement uh, and confirm it for yourself for the specific multimeter you're using. But I found that to be the case in, in all cases. However, this 10 right here, there's always a 10 amp case for multimeters that actually has a uh, a conversion that the that the uh, that the chip uh, does when it displays. So if you do 10 uh, amps, if you put this on the 10 amp scale, there will be a conversion done. But these are volt millivolt to milliamp. Um, as long as you do the modifications that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, thanks for, that's a good question. Um, so for the three I showed that it was true. Um, so I, I, I recommend, I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of lean toward using the 100 microfarad capacitor with the, mul with the modified multimeter. And, and that way it gets extremely um, consistent, uh, extremely uh, uh, high time constant. And um, the large capacitance also eliminates other sources of error uh, with regards to the internal uh, capacitance of your uh, of your multimeter, which also so the multimeter has its own filtering capacitor, uh, which is about twenty eight nanofarads in this case, as I measured from the time constant values. Um, but uh, uh, but it, you know, hundred microfarad would make that even more irrelevant, whereas the ten microfarad may see um, a, you know a portion of a percentage error it would be even lower for a 100 microfarad capacitor. But keep in mind, like if you're measuring 100, 186 uh, millivolts on a 10 microfarad, you'll be measuring 18.6 millivolts on a, uh, sorry, on a 10 microfarad, you'll be measuring 18.6 on a 100 microfarad due to the uh, C equal, uh, Q equals CV. If you increase the C by 10, you reduce the V, the voltage by 10. Um, so, if you're not comfortable or you, f you find that there, there's a likelihood of error for, for different reasons for having a millivolt range, like under 100 millivolt measurement, um, then you may use consider using the 10 microfarad capacitor. But I found that using the 100 microfarad capacitor is a, basically a filter which stabilizes that voltage. Uh, so it uh, it works ends up working uh, quite well. Um, so for this small uh, sc ultrasonic scaler that I used, I I actually found practically that they had put eighteen point six um, millivolts. So, a milli uh, so I measured eighteen point six millivolts from a very very small. Um, uh, and th this is this this calculation is not for this specific device, uh, but it was it, I found it to be very small. Actually, it is. Um, it's about it was less than 10 millimeters by and the inner diameter was five millimeters. So it's about the smallest ultrasonic transducer that you'll find. It has two rings, and I found it to be 60, about 56 uh, megapascals for that uh, voltage range. So it was um, quite. Uh, it, this is about the smallest you'll get. So you're, it's only going to be higher than 18.6. Um, so uh, technically, in engineering, you know, we're used to having like all these trailing digits. But it's it's not relevant because there's already a lot of this. There's some error with regards to calculating preload, anyways. So as long as you're, um, you know, within a few percentage of your target, uh, especially if you have such a kind of a stable probe, 
uh, you'll be okay definitely using the 100 microfarad, but the 10 microfarad is also still available for more accuracy. Um, if you uh, if you want if you want to be measuring a larger voltage um, for uh, mm, to get maybe a larger signal to noise ratio, uh, but I didn't find that to be a problem here. Um, so right now um, I'll just let everybody know again I'm continuing the, the weekly webinars. These are not the topics in order. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the next week's topic. I think I'm going to I might do um, um, mil, you know how do how do how do you directly get a megapascal value on your multimeter because these are just millivolts and they might get confusing. They might not seem accurate or, um, you know, you have to convert them before reporting to your colleagues and what, what, what does voltage mean? So I've heard some people talk about that. That would be kind of useful, but I'm, uh, I'd like to ask actually the people who have attended live what they want to hear next. Um, and I'll kind of stop the recording and I will actually let them uh, ask questions if they have them.